Earlier tonight we brought you the story of Nari and Jeremy Mansfield who only learnt this week their six-year-old autistic son Baxter who has a mental age of about two or three was put in a timeout seclusion room at a Wellington school without their knowledge. That timeout room is a small room about the size of a toilet cubicle at Miramar Central School. It's locked from the outside with a sliding window through the door. The Mansfields told me via Skype video they are in the process of removing Baxter from the school. I just don't feel there's an option and I'm, I'm not happy to leave him in that situation where if his TA isn't there, well, I have to rely on the administration of the school to take care of him and when that situation arose, it wasn't dealt with um, appropriately. I, I can't think of any, I can't reconcile in any way how putting a two or three year old, which is essentially what Baxter is, uh, into that situation. It's just, I, I, it's not, it's wrong on so many levels um, and, and I want better for my boy. He can't tell us um, and I need to be able to trust where he is and, and that's, we should be able to do that with a school. It's Nari and Jeremy Mansfield who were joining us via Skype video. Other parents have told Checkpoint they too plan to remove their children from the school if the principal and board of trustees are not held accountable. We've asked the school's principal, John Taylor-Smith, to talk to us about this. He refused, saying he's been given a directive not to. We're not quite sure who that's from. A report into the issue is due to be released tomorrow. The ministry told us about this uh, before that report is out tomorrow, the Minister of Education, Hekia Parata, joins us now from the gallery studio. Welcome back to Checkpoint, Minister. Nice to have you with us. What do you make of all of this? Well, I'm absolutely horrified. Um, I, I think it's absolutely intolerable that a wee boy like this has had that treatment in response to his behaviour. I think that seclusion, seclusion, a seclusion room of this nature is unacceptable, and I'm making that absolutely clear. Uh, I am expecting to receive the report from the Ministry later this evening, so I haven't yet read it. I know that as soon as the Ministry uh, was contacted uh, about this issue that they met with the school and have taken action to provide the school. Uh, so although this behaviour was wrong, we, don't, we, we certainly want to provide support so that the school uh, can get it right and we want that to be the case across the country so that our most vulnerable children are being given the right level of support. Yeah. When did you first hear about this? Um, I can't give you the exact day, but it was, I think actually, um, the Ministry advised me of it the day that it, it, it got into the media okay. um, by the frust you know, frustrated mum and dad, yeah. um, which I can completely understand. Yeah. The, the, the issue is this seems to be, and we don't know because the school won't talk to us and we haven't seen the report and nor have you, but it seems to be a purpose-built room. And from what we can see, it is small and it is dark. And if you are a small child, particularly one with autism, it must be terrifying in there. Now, ERO reports have taken place and they haven't referred to this room, its existence or the use of it. Are there rooms like this in other schools in New Zealand? Is this common practice? Do we need to just say, hold on a sec, let's get some clarity around what's allowed and what's not? Uh, so, so two, two, parts, two answers to your question. First of all, uh, there is a working group from the sector, including the School Trustees Association, principals, practitioners, who have been working on um, advice and guidelines for the sector, and those are due out next month. Right. The second thing that, uh, in answer to your question, is that I am not aware that this is common practice. I've asked the Ministry, uh, you know, how many complaints they've had of this kind uh, and there have been two uh, this school and another school now um, what's, the other, what's the other school minister can you tell uh, us I can but I'm, I'm not going to we are working with that school uh, to also get appropriate practices uh, occurring I had the opportunity of meeting with Judith, Judith Nels who's currently the president of the special ed uh, principals across New Zealand uh, talked with her this week and she said while this practice uh, you know used to happen some 
while ago, uh, it is not one that is condoned or accepted, and that there are a range of other tools and support that can be available. And that's what I'm focused on, is how we make sure that those schools, if there are others who are using this practice, uh, and, and let's be aware that there are two and a half thousand schools and um, parents and I trust that schools are doing the best that they, are following best practice in terms of providing learning support and to that end our government has put you know significant resources into this space uh, not just in terms of funding but in terms of actual tools and interventions and I just want to say one other thing this is not acceptable at all however in the context of what the general practice around learning support, around dealing with those young people that are some of the most challenging, New Zealand's education system is actually world leading. And I think it's important that we don't lose sight of where this, these exceptions have occurred, that that is the general practice across New Zealand, because it is not. Education Minister Hekia Parata, who is receiving the report from the Ministry tonight. Thank you for joining us, Minister. We appreciate it. We are hoping to receive the report from the Ministry tomorrow, and we will, of course, tell you about it on Checkpoint.